So there's been a lot of talk about Classic recently, obviously, as it's coming up, and I haven't really felt like I've been giving great answers to the questions on stream, so I figured I'd make a full video on this, and uh, I, you know, I couldn't really decide on the backdrop, so I figured let's just go full cam like so many people do. But before I do that, I wanted to say uh, that uh, I am you know, going to be playing Classic, and when I do, I'll be playing on the realm Mancrick, which is actually a normal realm, so a PvE realm, not a PvP realm. Uh, it's going to be played on U.S. realm set, the, the U.S. realm set, and it's an Eastern time zone realm. So if anybody wants to play uh, with me, I will be making a guild, and uh, you know we'll see what we'll do. I don't know. I'm not a, yeah, I'm not going to lie. That the more, uh, the closer we get to classic, the less excited I am, frankly. But I'm, I'm still going to play, I'm sure, and uh, I, I do intend on making a guild that's going to do some light rating, uh, especially on the weekend. So. Yeah, if you're interested in playing with me, uh, we can play together on Mancrick, the Mancrick realm. I think that's probably the best option because very common name, a uh, popular name, so hopefully that'll be a populated realm. But anyway, today we're going to just briefly talk about uh, why I, uh, you know, my, my main concern for Classic. We made a bunch of videos around this topic, but we've never actually addressed the question, you know, how I feel about this. And this, this gets brought up so often on stream, literally, uh, it seems like almost every day now, a question like this gets brought up. And I can't help but say I'm extremely concerned for the longevity of Classic. But these realms uh, coming out today, this was a big deal. So on the 12th, we're going to be able to select our character. Uh, we're going to be able to choose our character. If we have an active sub, we'll be able to uh, name him, etc. But I was really more concerned with today to know what realms were going to be available for this because this is very important to me. And uh, I am definitely abated a little bit. My, my frustrations and concerns are a little bit abated. Uh, I was definitely hoping that they did less realms in this, but this is the main thing we're concerned with is the realm populations and how the game is going to receive multiple years of no additions, right? So, uh, or, or more so no like major additions. Like obviously they're trying to stagger the content, quote unquote, but there's so little of it that's going to come out each you know, whatever they're calling it season, it's not a season, but you know, whatever they're calling it for this, uh, it's it's really not impressive. Like some of this stuff could have easily just all been out at launch. There's some things that obviously you don't want, like certain types of gear and certain types of systems that come out later in the expansions. You don't want them trivializing stuff early, but at the same time, like I really want to do Dire Maul. I love the Dire Maul dungeon sets and I really want to do Zulgara, but Dire Maul is not going to be out immediately and uh, Zulgara is not going to be out for a long time. So these are things I'm not super excited for, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get over the other things that I've already been concerned with for Classic. So here we go. Uh, if you were to ask me what is my biggest concern with Classic, and it is the stability of the population moving forward. That's the short, the shortest way I can, can make that a concise answer because the, re the real problem here is that there's a lot of people who are going to jump into Classic with very, very odd expectations. Uh, and I try to avoid, you know, insulting these people, but when the beta came out, man, it just seemed like everybody was way overly optimistic about this product uh, that, you know, full of tons of optimism, almost blindly so. Like people who, you know, I know to be serious, like PVPers or something like that, saying that they're very excited about leveling in Classic. I, I really hope people realize that this is a temporary excitement, right? Like you're not going to enjoy leveling characters for four years straight. Like there's eventually a time when this is not going to be exciting to you anymore, right? I hope people realize that because it's not been removed from the live game, yet these people are not doing like leveling challenges on the live game. And, uh, you know, say why. Uh, you might say why for different reasons, but... One way or the other, I, I do hope people can parse that information that this this type of excitement is very temporary. And, and it might be it, it's so exceedingly temporary that it might even cause problems within the first few months. But I'm willing to give Classic one full year before I think any major problems are going to befall it. But I do think about six months in, we're going to have some real concerns because... You know, no, no surprise. Hopefully, everybody knows this. I played a lot on private servers, and Nestarius was really my uh, my bread and butter there. I played Nestarius a lot, a lot more than I played live during Nestarius's lifespan. And then when it eventually relaunched as the Elysium brand with the same server list, I actually played it even more. So. Um, many of you may know me from when I streamed on Ace Games TV and I streamed uh, classic servers there. I played it a lot and it was mostly because WAD was terrible and Legion's beginning was the worst thing I've ever played through in World of Warcraft. But now it's not really that. I mean, BFA I've absolutely loved and uh, 8.2 especially has been really something special. So for me, uh, the real concern I have with this game moving forward is am is it worth me spending time leveling multiple characters on a realm 
that may have very big problems in the future. And, and, and the reason I think it's going to have big problems in the future is because of what I've seen on private servers. The main concern that always seemed to be brought up in private servers was dwindling population. There was nothing, not a single thing these server conglomerates could actually do to keep people coming except fresh realms. And I'm telling you right now, if Blizzard ever does a fresh realm, I will not be playing. There would no circumstance that I'll continue to play Classic if that's the case. I think this is the worst decision that any uh, Blizzard, you know, type game could ever make. A, a game where, you know, typically you're supposed to be progressing in such a way and then all of a sudden it's like, nope, why don't you start progressing all over again you know, on a whole new character? It's like one thing to say people hate expansions and season resets because it, there's these like big power jumps and cliffs and stuff, but this is a whole new character. It's a different character. I lose all my gold, all the things I've collected, all my power. It's all gone on these fresh realms. And you don't have to. It's not like you have to delete your old character to do this. But you pretty much have to because if you played on any of these private servers, you, you'll know that a once extremely populated realm, like the original Elysium realm, had over 14,000 people on launch with over 14,000 people in queue. Like it was like 20 to 30,000 people trying to play the server at any one point in time. And a year later, they did a fresh realm. It's like, do we really need this? You know what I mean? What happened to all these people? This is my number one concern. And I can't really understand why it happens because for me, I play the game because I enjoy the game. I know what I'm getting out of the game. I know exactly why I enjoy it. I know what things I want to do that will cause enjoyment. I know how I want to get that enjoyment. But I think, I, you know, I can only assume a lot of people don't. A lot of people play this game thinking it's something else thinking they're going to do something that's not realistic, thinking they're going to do you know something that they don't have time for or aren't going to be able to focus on, and then they just eventually fall off. And, and you know I've seen it in Livewell, of course, but a lot of those types of people, they come back. They eventually return. But this is not going to happen in Classic, right? Like when ZG launches, it's not suddenly going to be like, oh, a million people all return because they all couldn't wait for ZG. It's like there's just not enough content coming each patch and really it's kind of the mysticism of what you don't know about that that makes you want to return so so this is the this is a foundation like the the leg uh, the leg room that we have for classic here is is very minimal because if these people uh, could considerably influence how Blizzard creates this product, it could have very bad effects in the future. But luckily, we saw here today that this looks like it's not going to do that. I was worried that they were going to make like 40 realms like they did on official classic launch, right? Because there was a lot of realms in the early years. And uh, obviously, looking back at that, wasn't the best choice. You know what I mean? If they just focused on making their server hardware better and kept the smaller realms, I think a lot of people would have a lot better connection to the realm they're on right now. Um, and, you know, this is one of the main things everybody talks about with Classic. They're like, oh, the realm identity, the character identity, the social progression is the main thing that they're looking forward to in Classic. Well, if they made 40 realms, that's gone because that's eventually, no matter what, that, that would be a fact. Some of those realms would have to be merged or maybe even delete. I, I, I don't know how they would handle it, but there would have to be a non-Classic-like situation going on with those realms and that still may happen with these realms this is i think it's 13 it's still too many i think there should have been like eight i would have said eight two pvp maybe three pvp two pve and then you know whatever two rp whatever you want and then i guess an oceanic one of one of each and that's that's it we don't really need five pvp realms we certainly don't need four pve realms i am concerned about that but either way you know, 11 realms that aren't oceanic. That's just, that's probably three too many, like I say. And uh, it's still a concern for me because I do feel like some of these, like there's only going to be one popular PvE realm. And I'm hoping it's Mancrick because this is like the name that I think a lot of people might go to. They're like, oh, that's a realm that, you know, everybody thinks is funny. It's a funny name. So I'm hoping this is the one. But if at any point I am on a realm where I cannot do anything with people like you know basically it's, it's pugging this is what i'm talking about and i i pug a lot i mean this is how it is in live wow i have no problem with it whatsoever there's always people but in classic wow i had a lot of problems with it i'm going to detail some of those problems for you now um but i do a lot of pugging and if there's ever a point where i cannot find enjoyment in the player base in the overall player base on my realm then classic is dead for me i'm not going to make a new paladin I'm not going to just forget about the one I've been playing and make a new one on a more populated realm. That is a structural flaw with the video game. And they don't seem like they're interested in fixing it because all of these people are like, oh, no, Cross Realm has ruined the game. 
Well, it hasn't ruined the game for me, and I uh, think you're going to be surprised a couple years from now when there's pretty much no other option other than to merge these realms. So, but anyway, so let's talk a little bit about why I'm particularly like. So that's that's why I'm concerned, but why I'm even more concerned with Classic and now this product of Classic. Okay, so the main reason is because classic it involves a lot of time and a lot of people to make work okay to have success in classic you cannot play alone you 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 do need a social structure around you and even if you did manage to pug 100% of the content it's just not the same you know what i mean this isn't live wow where there's serious players constantly pugging challenging content those people are going to rely on a guild structure because of how kind of the tedium of the PVE in the in this game requires help. You know what I mean? It's just easier to have friends. It, that's just how it is. In Live WoW, it's not. It doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Like, frankly, you know, people in my guild are less skilled than some people I might run into in pugs. It's not always a bad thing to pug. But in Classic, it's almost universally this way. So in order to successfully have any type of, you know, uh, non-guild grouping happen properly, you need a lot of people because a lot of people like, you know, a high percentage of the people who are playing classic are just not going to want to do this. You know what I mean? They're going to form like on private service. This was particularly problematic because almost all the skilled people on the Alliance uh, version, like the Alliance half of the realm that I played on, which was Nostarius and became Elysium, whatever it became, were, were in guilds. It was like three or four Alliance guilds that were very like they, they quote unquote serious for private server classic. But they were inclusive as hell. You would never see any of those players out in the world. And I'm sure that was a great experience for them. But I couldn't make their raid times. I couldn't find interest in being in their groups. So I wasn't involved. You know what I mean? So I basically was relegated to you know other, other guilds that didn't work out or pugging. And uh, pugging was um, just an absolute nightmare on Classic. And, and so here's the reasons why. Okay, Because things are so poorly structured in classic with absolute no interest in making group making a, a real thing. Now I already made a video on this channel about, um, I have already forgotten the add on, but anyway, the video is there. It's an add on that's basically going to help build a structure like the pre-made group finder from live. Wow. Okay. And people are, are freaking out about this. Like so many uh, ridiculously stupid comments about this add on, but it's just, it needs to be in the game. Like I, I really can't understand an argument for it not being in the game, especially because it's just optional. Like if you really hate it, you can just not use it, but it should definitely be in the game from my perspective, because finding groups for things that you want to find groups for is a nightmare in classic. And I think is borderline harassment inducing, like people constantly whispering you about joining a group that you're not even remotely demonstrating interest in. Like I will be in the complete opposite zone, not even in relationship to this dungeon. And people will be whispering me if I want to do Zulfarak while I'm leveling. It's like, no, are you kidding me? Why would I want to do that? You know what I mean? If I wanted to do that, I would express interest in wanting to do that. But I can't do that in Classic because there's literally no structure in the game, like a system in the game that will allow me to do that. So I, I think this is just... Uh, nobody... Uh, Nobody's going to convince me that this add-on should not exist. And having this structure in the game is just a mandatory part of the game for me. Like, without it, I couldn't imagine playing it. So I am very happy to see that, you know, this guy who I've t spoken to a few times has made this add-on. And I am looking forward to using it in Classic. But even with that, it's still a real, pain, a real pain in the ass. Because actual content in Classic has very little replayability. Okay, so let's, let's list some of the things that are replayable about LiveWow's content. And you, you know you could say whatever you want about live wow uh most of it's inaccurate but regardless the one thing that they have managed to do very 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 well and that i don't think anybody should disagree with is that there's many reasons to do some of this content there's not it's not just one thing you know what i mean and dungeons especially but also raids and also pvp and and, and a lot of that is because of azurite uh you know whatever like uh, artifact power and uh, the way Titan Forging can interface with some of this content, but mostly be just because of the competitive nature of it. And this is something that I'm really, really, really concerned with for Classic because there's effectively no competitive nature in Classic. Almost everything is this long, drawn-out kind of, you know, uh, brute force your way through it. There's no challenge. There's no skill. You know, your most skilled leveler is only going to really take about a day or two off it you know, solo that, I mean, obviously there's ways to power level in classic, but it's like most of them are either borderline exploits or just, you know, know what you're doing before you do it. And then, you know, you get, you get into the, the PVE, the end game PVE. And it's like, 
okay, so you know we're gonna be doing this five mans, which which basically have no mechanics. It's literally just threat. If you do, you know, if the tank has good threat and your healer doesn't run out of mana constantly, then you're not gonna have any problems with the five man. And then you move on to maybe ten man like upper black rock spire or or maybe twenty man raids, and it's still kind of the same. Very very few. I mean, there's mechanics in those obviously, but it's still kind of like you know you just brute force your way through it. Really, only four or five people out of the whole group ever need to actually know what they're doing. Even if they explain it to the others, it doesn't really even matter as long as they are like cognizant. You know what I mean? They're they're aware of these mechanics. That's all there is to it. It's not like in live WoW where, you know, a single error in a Mythic Plus dungeon can literally deplete the key. Wiping at the end of a for of a tyrannical boss is that's it. You've just wasted five to ten minutes maybe on this boss. So that you will lose now. You lose because of that one potentially one mistake. And it's even worse in raiding, right? Raiding it's like so many bosses where if you a single person dies, it might wipe the entire group eventually, maybe not immediately, but eventually because of enrage timers or you know, this cascade where you can't soak mechanics enough or you can't deal with ads quick enough, stuff like this. So this doesn't exist in classic, right? And because of the lack of that competitive nature, there's very little challenge to raiding. So if you followed the competitive scene, and it does exist, it, it, there are people out there doing this in private servers. They're, they're, it's all speed running. That's it. A hundred percent of this is speed running. That's the only thing that exists because there's no challenge to progression in classic, right? Like you've already learned everything you need to learn about classic before the products even launched. You know how to do BC. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know how to do MC. You know how to do BWL. You know how to do AQ. You know how to do next before they even come out. There's literally the potential of going on your main character on live and soloing the bosses to see what they do. You know what I mean? It, it's just so much easier than any other product Blizzard's ever put out. It's no, there's no progression there. It's going to take some guilds the first time to clear it, quote unquote. But it's not like they actually have to learn the fights. They're not going to take hundreds of pulls to learn encounters. If they make mistakes, they might wipe. But there's no actual learning involved in this at this point. So, what people have instead resorted to is speed running, and it's actually a very interesting. I do, I do have a lot of respect for this because. A lot of the speedrunning like uh, success comes from these world buffs and these consumables that normal raiders are not going to ever really prioritize. People who raid MC twice a week or whatever, like they, they're never going to look for these things as as much as these people are. This, these people, it's mandatory for their success. If a single person is not doing it, they're going to lose minutes in the speedrun, and that's you know. Basically, so there's, you should look it up if you haven't seen it. There's people out there who have speed run Nax to like sub two hours. Like an, I think an hour and 35 minutes was the one I saw. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I, I have seen very, like, less than four hours. Let's put it this way. Like, it's tough. It would be tough for me to imagine clearing Mythic mythic raid in in less than a few hours like that's that's how difficult the raid is that's how difficult like progression through the raid is it would have to be like years from now for me to even conceive years of, of similar gearing progression too, not just like you know i've learned everything i need to learn that's it like my character would have to have been doing that content for like probably over a year for us to have cleared everything we clear and then do it without a single mistake like zero deaths throughout the entire eight or nine boss raid, whatever one we're talking about at the time, it's just hard to conceive, right? Like, this is not even possible. But yet, people are doing it in classic, quote-unquote, which is supposed to be very difficult. Nax, one of the hardest raids ever, quote-unquote, right? People are clearing that in an hour and a half. And this is on private servers. Now, there's some indication that on live WoW, raiding is going to even be easier. I don't really know about this. I've tested it very, very, very little. But people are saying that dungeons... And I don't know if it's something to do with armor or how damage is calculated, but that like group, like instance PVE in general does very little damage, like considerably less than private servers. There's a lot of changes to the beta and uh, to now eventually live classic compared to private server classic. And some of them are good, some of them are bad. Some of them are pretty bad that I'm not even really that interested in them anymore. But that one is something to watch for because they did zero this is a big thing. They did no level 60 testing. You can never have a level 60 character. They did AV testing, but that's PvP. It's a lot different. None. Not a single point of testing. No raids, no dungeons, no battlegrounds at 60. Nothing. Okay? Nothing. And I think that's intentional. I think they were very worried about how fast people are going to clear. And uh, I think they intentionally hid it from people. You know what I mean? I really do. Uh, I have to look at that whole beta process as just an absolute hype job because 
anyway, I don't want to get off on this, but so anyway, these are, these are the reasons, like this is the historical perspective I have on why I'm so concerned with this. Cause there's very little reason to care about like progression in classic. It's, it's all about you wanting to do it. And once you stop wanting to do it, what's holding you to the game? You know what I mean? It's going to be your guild. I hope so. Because otherwise there's no like leaderboards or DPS charts or parses. These things are going to exist, but they're so minor. They're so almost irrelevant. You know what I mean? Like they're, you basically have to force yourself to care about them because they don't make the encounter needed. You know, it's not like, oh, let's check our logs because we're wiping all the time. We need to learn about this, how we can get better. You don't need that in classic. Let's let's check our, you know, our, our, our score to see if we did Blackrock depths properly. You know what I mean? Like the, the, nothing like this exists. So with this lack of competitive play at Endgame, I'm very concerned with the longevity of Endgame PvE. And especially, you know, you know, if, if 100% of Endgame PvE is structured and only 50% of it is pugging, then obviously by default I'm, I'm, I'm twice as worried because of that. You know what I mean? So uh, I don't know how it's going to end up, but if it's anything like private servers, there's effectively no reason to rerun this content. So the only people you might pug with are people who have do are doing the content for potentially the first time ever in their whole life. And this is expounded upon my concern with this is expounded upon because of how many people I know are like jumping into classic. I'm like, it's the best. Oh my God. It's the best. Oh, I love it. Oh my God. I can't wait. It's like, okay, well, do you know anything about it? Like, are you going to actually do something? Because this happened a lot on private servers, man. I'm not going to lie. I could probably go back to the exact moment. I'll, I'll, it's burned into my my skull. I did a Dire Mall East run and nobody knew anything. Like I'm talking about we wiped. We, I had to like tell people where to go. Like they did not know the layout of the dungeon. They had never been in there before. I'm pretty sure it was all four other people. I think maybe one person was also like, I think there was one guy who was kind of just laughing at them, if I remember correctly. But it was, like, really bad. <laughs> and and those types of moments, like, looking back at that, it's like, wow, that's not good, man. That That's not something that should be happening when there's only one difficulty of content. Like, you could see it in Mythic Plus, right? You do a 15, and you get some bad players at times. Sometimes they kind of sneak through the cracks because it's like, they look like they're good, but they're playing the right spec, and they're getting carried, blah, blah, blah. But this... There's only one way to do Dire Mall East. You know what I mean? There's no Dire Mall East plus 10. So if you do Dire Mall East, you do it this way. You know what I mean? Maybe there's different routes or some kind of things you can skip. But I'm not talking about skipping stuff. I'm talking about just going through the dungeon. People getting lost in Dire Mall East, which it is kind of, you know, it's a little complicated to navigate, but it's not that complicated to navigate. So that's my big concern because I really... So, so like, hopefully this summarizes all into one, like, concise sphere and that's why i'm making this video like my major concern with classic is that there is not going to be enough useful players at level 60 for me to enjoy the game playing with and i worry about this because eventually i know people are going to quit even serious players eventually i know uh, guilds are going to dominate you know the pve there's going to be very little pugging and eventually it's going to be uh you know a server situation where people are thinking about jumping ship so those three things together make me very 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 concerned with classic and i can't help but you know point the finger at those people who are like oh i just want to i just want to log on for the experience you know i just want to i want to live and and wow kind of thing it's like Okay, have fun. I hope you do have fun. I'm not I, I sometimes it sounds like I'm being, you know, disparaging to these people, but if you're doing that and you're taking up a spot in a queue, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. This is just my big concern because I really worry about first of all, this is this is another problem that we have with private servers, right? There's say be like 11,000 people on the realm, right? 11,000 whatever, just say that number, okay? Well, half at best, half of them are your other faction. So let's just go 10,000. I don't know why I said it. So let's just go half of 10,000. So at best, you got 5,000 people to pull from. Okay, at best. It's probably never going to be the case. No realm is ever going to be 50-50 dead even, but maybe this time it will be the case. Usually on private servers, it was more like 70-30 horde to alliance. Uh, but regardless, that's how, you know, however it goes. Now, that's 50% of human beings on the game. Okay. First of all, there's never, I don't think there's going to be 11,000 people on any realm. This was on private servers where every single person was on a single realm. And obviously that's not how Blizzard works. Okay. They have multiple realms for a reason, not just because there's so many people. It's because they do not want every single human being from Europe and Asia and Oceanic all playing on one realm. 
It's about structure. It's about uh, server stability. Okay. So one way or the other, the population is going to be heavily dwindling because of that alone, eventually. There's a lot less people. We can never play with people from Europe. Uh, assuming that they don't do something radical here, Europe and you know U.S. realms are going to be completely separate. Okay, I don't know what's going to happen with with England when they leave Europe. So I, let's not even get into that. Uh, but anyway, um, so you know, at best five thousand people. At best, half the people in the realm. And then let, let's talk about the realism here of how many people are going to be on the server at not level sixty. Even if we're talking about six months from now, I'd say conservatively you probably got at least thirty percent of that fifty percent leveling, right? So if you got 5,000 people on Alliance, there's probably at least 2,000 maybe, 2,000-ish, not level 60, okay? That's really conservative. <laughs> I would say probably more realistically, it'd be like 3,000, but I don't know for sure. It's been a long time since I thought about that number, so we're just going to say about two-fifths of the population at Classic about six maybe to, to one year in is not going to be 60. So you cannot play with them. There's no content that you can do with a level 40 character when you're level 60. There's nothing, okay? Not a single piece of content. You can't do dungeons together. You can't, you know, help them level. You can't do almost anything other than mob tag for them. That's the only way you could even really positively interact with them other than ganking them, right? So now how many of those people are going to want to pug at all, right? So, so say there's now 3,000 people at max level online on a Friday night on World of Warcraft classic man crick realm okay 5,000 people in this realm which is never it's just again never going to happen but just say 5,000 people or 3,000 people now so out of those 3,000 how many are going to actually want to pug realistically if it's anything like private servers about one third of the population are going to be not actively involved in a guild and you know people will say like oh you know being actively involved in a guild is the best thing about classic and it's it's the way wow is always meant to be played and i totally understand i mean i'm making a guild right i'm going to be involved in a guild but still i'm talking about pugging and pugging sucks in classic anyway so now there's only 1000 people right so this is one tenth of the actual server base is available for pugging and this again is pure estimation probably not even close to being true and i de definitely don't think on the south side you know i don't think it's going to be better than this uh, now out of those 1000 people how many people are going to be looking for the content you're looking for? If, if say, 1,000 people are all looking for a group, you know what I mean? How many of those people are going to be looking for the content you're looking for? Well, probably about, you know, say maybe 30% of them are going to be looking for Battlegrounds. So that's now down to about 700 people, okay? Uh, there's feasibly five, 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 five mans. I mean, there's, there's Skolo, there's Strat, BRD, sort of. There's um, obviously the Dire Malls, which you know kind of count as one, but really there's there's three different ones. So that's kind of like you know six, depending on if you count BRD, because obviously BRD is something that most people like. Right now, people just speed run BRD. If you've never done BRD or AV for that matter in classic private servers, you're in for a shock. Okay, <laughs> people do it completely differently than they did in the old days, especially BRD. It's not going to be like you remember it. But anyway. Um, so yeah, you count BRD and you count uppers. I mean, those are both technically dungeons, but uppers is 10 man and you require more people. So I kind of would not really count that. But together we'll say five end game, five mans. Okay, because, you know, BRD and uppers kind of equate to one and then uh, the other, you know, the other four. The other like four to five-ish, depending on what we're talking about with Dire Mall. No, very few people do all three Dire Malls. There's usually only like one of the three that you really need gear from, and that's what you focus on. And that's the other problem, right? There's no replayability of this content. Once you have the gear from these dungeons, nobody's really caring about them. So so we'll, we'll get to that. But So okay, so we now have 700 people looking to pug PvE, right? The others are going to be pugging PvP or something like this. So they're now separated across about five to six dungeons and then a couple raids. So you need 40 people for an MC pug, which happens all the time. People pug MC all the time on private servers. It takes forever to fill up, and usually by the time you get 40, the first 20 have gone AFK. But either way, it does happen. So that's effectively five five mans worth of people. So that just took 40, like it, it just took eight allocations of five mans away. So effectively, you've just taken at least an eighth of the population of that 700 away 
because they're now doing raids, which require that many more people. So you now are left with something like about five, 500 people that are going to be distributed up across five to six five minutes, depending on how you're looking at it, okay? And uh, I think you're starting to see the problem here, right? Like this, this fractal decrease of interest in this specific type of content that I'm going to be mostly pursuing is going to be very frustrating when things continue to dwindle. So that's that's a 10,000 people. There's never going to be 10,000 people on any one realm. I'd imagine Blizzard is going to actively prevent this with server queues or with just overall player base without even having to try this. So this was only ever the case when there was like basically one realm you could play on. So now it's probably going to be more like, you know, a, th a couple thousand. I don't know. I, I hope I made my point. I, I think uh, I've said it as clear as I can say it. The overall population is my biggest concern with Classic. The overall lack of interest in uh, actually pugging content and the overall lack of interest in, you know, serious players that aren't just going to, you know, get into a group and then just do whatever the hell they want. Like, you know, it's th th they're not Mythic Plus. People are just going to go AFK. They're going to they're gonna act like idiots. They're going to pull stuff without, like, any care by accident and, and all this. It's like, it's a different game very different the content is going to be very different and then once you gear up in that content this has not even really been talked about yet once you gear up in that content it's over that's it you know what i mean so there might be ten thousand people online five thousand people on horde three thousand people pugging whatever weird numbers we're going with the first you know, six months but then a year there might be ten thousand people online maybe 1,000 people pugging because there's no reason for them to pug. You understand? Like, this is assuming that they need the content. This is assuming that they equally, those 3,000 people or whatever, are all needing to do Molten Core, are all needing to do Zulgarub or something like this, and they're all looking for groups equally, whether they're looking in Guild or whether they're looking in the mornings and the afternoons, blah, blah, blah. There's all these variables. But this is still assuming they need the content. So, you know, two years from now, when not a single person is going into BRD, well, that's a bad example because there's a lot of people doing that for the Hand of Justice and stuff. But when not a single person needs a single thing, from Skolomance, you know what I mean? Other than crafting flasks, that's that's what happens. This is if you've never played private servers, just please take just at least acknowledge what I'm saying, okay? If you have not spent, if you not, did not level five, maybe six to seven characters like I did on private servers over the course of a two-year span and spend this much time playing this game on on this environment then please just at least acknowledge the fact that this might not go how you think it's going to go, okay? And whether or not that bothers you, that's up to you. But this is my major concern, and it's my major concern because I am very worried about spending a lot of hours. Like, I spent a lot of hours on Nostarius, man. I'm not going to lie to you when I am still very bitter about the fact that those characters are ready to go, decked out, and there's nobody to play with on that realm. Like, they finally merged it, and it's it's probably better than it was, but... There was a time when I would log on to that realm and there was less than a thousand people on, and that's across both factions. That is very, like, you can't do anything on a realm like that. There's just this malaise about it, like, oh, it's just a dead realm. I'm just going to kind of mess around and then I'm going to be off. Hopefully that kind of stuff doesn't happen with Official Classic because it is made by Blizzard. There's always that looming threat that a dead realm, quote unquote, in uh, you know private server community gets shut down. That it's going to get merged. It's going to get you know ruined by some some means that you don't even want to play on it anyway. So it just perpetuates this issue. That shouldn't happen on LiveWire. So there's I'm not even going to con contribute. Like that's not even going to contribute to my opinion on this topic. But one way or the other, there's very very little reason to rerun these dungeons. Once you add the gear from them, you don't need a single thing from them. There's almost no replay value to them. You know, there's maybe a couple quests that you might have done and then, you know, the gearing process and, you know, maybe like Stratholme's got the orbs on the ground. You might, you know, you might want to pick up the orbs every once in a while from like live strat. You might get some, but it's really not worth running. Like, it's not like Mythic Plus where it's like, okay, I know why I'm doing this. I'm going to do it over and over and over and over again. This has no competitive element. The five man's like pugging in general has no competitive element. Uh, very little replayability and a very limited amount of people who are even going to be interested in it in the first place to the point where I feel like I'm existing within a fraction of a fraction for classic. So, so should I level five characters again, like I did in the stars, I had a warrior, a shaman, both on horde, a druid on horde as well. And then I had a paladin and a priest on classic, uh, on alliance. Okay. So I had five characters across multiple different accounts. So I could play on all these different realms, uh, or, uh, you know, horde and alliance on the same realm here. And it uh, it's all gone now.
You know what I mean? So I'm not doing that a third time. There's no third time for me. If for some reason any of these contributing factors effectively kill my game, effectively kill my character to the point that he is now on a realm that he does not want to be on, that there are no players to play with, that even getting people into my own guild is impossible. Like, I've been running a guild on Live... This is another reason that this is being brought up. I've been running a guild on Live WoW for 10 years now almost, okay? And it is very difficult to find people who come to this guild with the right mindset. Almost, I'd say it's getting to the point where it's almost impossible. It's such a difficult thing to do to find people that are willing to play for a long term with me. And we have found some thanks to the stream a lot. So thanks a lot for this. But very rare outside of the stream, like just completely removing the stream from this. Very, very, very rare. It's like a diamond in the rough kind of moment to find a good player who's going to stay in this guild that's not already associated with me. And that's on a, a version of the product where you can freely level characters quickly, you boost them, you could switch realms at your heart's content, you can play alliance and horde in the same realm. Like you could do whatever the hell you want on live. It's easy. You could transfer realms. I pay twenty five dollars. I'm on a different realm. Assuming you're probably not going to be able to do that on classic. Maybe you can. If they do, part of my concern will be alleviated. But one way or the other, to start over. It's a whole new game, basically. I got to get all gold again. I got to get all gear again. I got to level five new characters. Like, you know, I want to have a character that herbalism. I want to have a character that might be a tailor. You know, all this stuff. I want to do all these things. I don't want to have to do them twice. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's not, that's not the game for me. So, anyway, long video. But that's, that's the answer. It's a long and short of it. Okay. I'm very, very concerned with Classic. And frankly, 8.2 is just excellent. It's really fun and you know, if it's between a version of the product that I know is going to continue to release new and interesting content every few months, and it's going to always challenge me and keep me engaged on the Blood Death Knight, the spec that I love playing, versus a version of a product that I've already logged probably millions of hours into, uh, you know, level dozens of, like, I've leveled three different Paladins to 60 now over the last few years on private servers. I'm going to have to level a fourth now, which I don't like doing. I really do like do not like leveling Paladins up to about 40, then it gets fun. Uh, I'm going to have to do a lot of things that I'm not super excited about, all just to do about a handful of things that I am excited about. And if those things I am excited about are really arduous to get groups for, or are just filled with complete noobs, or I have to convince friends and viewers of the stream just to play with me just so I could even complete them, we're done. All right, so thanks for watching. That's that's all I have to say. But uh, anyway, if yeah, again, if you're interested in playing with me after all this, <laughs> if you're realistic about Classic, if you know why you're going to play Classic, if you know you want to play with me, we can do so together on the Man Crick realm on uh, Eastern time zone. It's a normal PvE realm. I'm going to be playing Alliance. As I said, I'm going to be playing a Paladin. Another thing I can't stand about Classic is that I have to play Alliance to play a Paladin, but let's move on. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.